G'day guys, Disney Dave coming at you once again from Down Under. Quite early this morning, I had the absolute pleasure of being able to attend the Melbourne preview screening of Beauty and the Beast for the Walt Disney Company Australia. The screening I attended was actually one of the very first screenings of this film anywhere in the world. In fact, the LA premiere is happening right now as I record this video. Now, because of this, I'm under a couple of strict embargoes. I'm not actually allowed to post a review of the film for about another 11 and a half hours. But what I am allowed to post now is a reaction. I thought for my reaction, I want to talk a little bit about storytelling. For as long as humans have been able to communicate, we have been telling stories. Those first people who sat around a campfire and told stories which spread from word of mouth. The first people who picked up rocks and carved stories into cave walls. The very first people to pick up paper and pen and write their stories down. The first people who performed stories live on a stage. The first the first people who picked up a camera and filmed moving images. The first people who figured out how to make cartoons move on the screen. And the first people to use computer generated images. Since the beginning of time we have been telling stories in different ways. But the one thing that does remain constant is the stories that we tell. The stories that we tell now are the same stories that we were telling thousands of years ago. In relation to Beauty and the Beast, the first version of Beauty and the Beast that was ever published was published in 1740. That's almost 300 years ago. But it doesn't end there. The original version of Beauty and the Beast published all that time ago was actually an amalgamation of various different stories that before that point were told only by word of mouth. The very first stories that can be seen to have influenced the story of Beauty and the Beast date back to the second century. The story of Beauty and the Beast has been told in one form or another for almost 2,000 years. Now there have been various versions of Beauty and the Beast over the year. There was the original version, there was the one published by Andrew Lang in the 1800s, of course the 1991 animated film from Walt Disney Animation, and the Broadway musical which spun out of that film, and now we get a live action version of that film as well. Now the reason I bring this up is that I've heard so many people complaining about remakes and reboots of late. It's so easy to blame Hollywood as being lazy and unoriginal and it's just as easy to blame Disney for being lazy and greedy for remaking all their animated films. But I don't see it like that. The original animated version of Beauty and the Beast was 26 years ago. The version of Beauty and the Beast that we are getting now would not have been possible almost 30 years ago. As time goes on and artists find new ways to tell their stories to brand new generations, we go back to what we know and we tell the same story that have been told over and over and over again for thousands of years. That's how we should look at this new live action adaptation of Beauty and the Beast. Not as a remake, not as a reboot, but as a natural progression of a story which has been told for thousands of years. Just think about that. In 11 and a half hours, I'll be loading a complete review of Beauty and the Beast. If you are new to my channel and you'd like to check out that review as soon as it goes up, please, after the jump, hit subscribe. For all my regular viewers, thank you for joining me once again. I do hope that you look out for that review once it goes up. And to absolutely everybody, thank you for joining me once again. Until next time, guys, take care, and I hope you have a magical day.